Coming up, his soothing voice was the soundtrack for the groovy 70s. He wrote songs with a band that mesmerized the me generation and ushered in the genre of soft rock. But after years of dissension and inevitable burnout, the group that he conducted just broke up. By the mid 80s, this iconic vocalist surprised his fans around the world as he waved goodbye to the music industry and he just up and disappeared. Instead of wooing fans on stage at sold out arenas, he just went his own way. Find out exactly where he went. Up next, the steady rise and sudden farewell of the man I like to call the maestro of mellow and one of his signature songs. The story of it with one of the best bridges in the history of rock coming up on Professor of Rock. Hey music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you remember that feeling of just desperation when you had like 20 seconds left to insert another quarter to continue your arcade game, but you've run out of money, you're gonna dig this channel of deep musical nostalgia. Make sure to subscribe below right now, click the big red button and click the bell so you can get the stories from your favorite songs straight from the legends. Since the beginning of the popular music era, there have been some iconic singers with voices that have mesmerized generations of listeners. You know, golden voices talking about a soothing, therapeutic experience that gives us all peace and tranquility as an escape from a disruptive world. Talking about classic voices like Bing Crosby, Frank Sinatra, Nat King Cole, Karen Carpenter, even James Taylor come to mind. One singer that is definitely in that bunch. I call him the maestro of mellow, just a master of 70s classics that really took me years to fully appreciate. Mr. David Gates. David Gates became the gentle rock star with the debut of Bread, the band he co-founded with Rob Royer and Jimmy Griffin in 1968. But before he made it to the popular music spotlight, David Gates humbly worked diligently behind the scenes as an invaluable contributor to a variety of the biggest names in the business. From the moment he moved his wife and kids to LA in 1961, when he was a mere 21 years old. Many fans may not know that David wrote and produced songs for trendsetters like Frank Zappa and Captain Beefheart. He also sketched arrangements for the King Elvis Presley and Pat Boone, country superstars like Buck Owens and Merle Haggard, and one of the true geniuses of the rock era, Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys. Uh, I'm Paul Peterson, She Rides With Me in 1964. <laughs> One of David's biggest achievements prior to the mega success that he had with Bread was writing the Grammy-nominated theme for the movie Journey to Shiloh in 1967 and the arrangement of the number three adult contemporary hit, Baby, the Rain Must Fall. Yeah, but baby, the rain must fall. Later in 1967, David produced an album for a psychedelic pop group named The Pleasure Fair, uh, in which Rob Royer was a member. It was Rob who suggested uh, that he and David Gates should put their own band together with their mutual friend, guitarist and vocalist Jimmy Griffin. It wasn't sexy, but the trio came up with the name of their new band when a delivery truck passed by them one day with the word bread on the side. They're like, that's the name. It's been a they got their name off the side of a bread truck. I love it. Bread's first album echoed uh, the psychedelic vibe of the late 60s. It's what the guys were used to. Uh, they released three singles from their debut record, and all of them fell to chart. But on the second album, the group found a distinctive groove, and they struck gold with Make It With You, a number one single that defined the sound of the early 70s and you know, created the foundation for the genre tabbed as soft rock. Some call it yacht rock now. I wanna make it with you. And from there, uh, pardon the pun, but Bread went on a serious roll. Uh, from 1970 to 1973, Bread had 11 consecutive top 40 hits, starting with Make It With You and ending with Aubrey. I mentioned uh, in a previous edition of Professor of Rock that as a, a young boy, I didn't really dig the sound that David Gates and Brett. In fact, I hated it. My dad played Brett all the time when we were driving in his truck. I remember one day uh, telling him, Dad, I don't like this. Can we change it? My dad seemed to understand that, you know, as a young kid, I couldn't relate to the gentle serenity of Brett. 
But he said, I'll tell you what, I'm going to play you a song. I want you to listen to it all the way through, open-minded, without saying a word. If you don't like it, I'll never play Bread ever again. And the song he played was Baby, I'ma Want You. Two minutes and 25 seconds later, I was completely hooked. I gotta be honest. You're the only one I care enough to hurt about. So David Gates grew up in a musical family. His father Clarence was a band director and his mother Wanda was a piano teacher. As a child, David was something of a, a prodigy. And by the time he entered high school, David was proficient on a guitar, also the violin, the bass, and the piano. In fact, he wrote Baby I'ma Want You on a piano while working on uh, material for Bread's fourth LP in 72. He brought the song into the studio for the band to record and played it off a piano melody that he just arranged at home. The band attempted to lay the song down, but it just didn't work. In David's words, the song had no life. So David left the studio, he returned home, he was pretty demoralized. He truly believed the song was a hit, but he worried that it would never come to fruition. Then he had the idea to raise the song a key higher, you know, and change the arrangement from a piano to a guitar. The very next day, he brought the revamped track back into the studio, and the changes made all the difference to capture that a romantic bread allure. Lately, I'm a that you love. And that bridge, it's repeated actually, twice he sings that bridge. That bridge is better than the chorus, it's the best thing in the song. It's the best bridge, probably one of the best two or three bridges in the history of rock music. It truly is. Used to be my life was just emotions. I mean, the song is so great. It, it's so soothing. It's like, uh, it's better than sliced bread. Again, pardon the pun. Baby I Want You was the title track from Bread's a fourth record. It's actually their highest charting album. It peaked at number three on the Billboard album chart. It was arguably the band's most complete album, with many of their greatest hits on that one. Everything I Own. I give I own. Diary was on that one. I found a diary underneath the tree. Down on my knees. Down on my knees. And one of Brad's rare rockers, Mother Freedom. Baby I Want You, the song was the second cut on side one and the fourth single from the album of the same name. It was another gold record for Bread, climbing to number three on the Billboard Hot 100 and also went to number one on the AC chart. It was a number eight hit in Australia and a top five single in Canada as well. Maybe I'm a crazy, but I just can't live with that. The Sentimental Masterpiece, uh, another great song. Everything I Own was the fifth and final single from Baby I Want You. And uh, I mean, that album, it was, it's like a greatest hits album. Less than 10 months later, David and Bread continued their furious pace uh, from there releasing Guitar Man, their fifth album in less than three years. By the release of Guitar Man in the fall of 72, uh, Rob Royer left the group though, while another respected uh, session player from the LA music scene, Larry Nectel, came on board. At that time, Bread was up to four multi-instrumentalists. There was Nectel, along with Mike Botts and co-founders Jimmy Griffin and David Gates. Rob grew uh, increasingly frustrated by David's creative control over the band, I guess. That's what he said. So he walked. Rob's exit was the precursor to the inevitable dissolution of Bread, unfortunately. A grueling schedule of nonstop touring and recording, I mean, five albums in three years, that led to a physical and emotional burnout within the band. And there was a rift within the group that escalated to a breaking point, you know, when Rob quit the band. I mean, Bread was the avatars of soft rock. It's a label that Rob and Jimmy despised, actually. They were never comfortable being the leaders of that kind of musical movement. If Rob had his way, Bread would have prolonged the sound of the 60s as long as they could. Jimmy Griffin wasn't a happy camper either. Uh, one of his main points of contentions was that uh, David sang lead on virtually every song. And Jimmy was a very good singer, but very few people knew this because you know, David Gates got all the attention. I mean, such a great voice, it's stink voice. You can actually hear Jimmy's talent as a lead singer on bread tracks like Could I, She's the Only One, a Too Much Love, and the number 28 hit single Down on My Knees. And that one he co-wrote with David. You know I'm down on my knees, yeah. yes, I've been down on my knees. 
As we continue to break down this classic band, I want to thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear, the glasses I always wear. Right now, you can get a complete pair of prescription eyewear glasses starting at just $6.95. That's right, $6.95. You can buy for your whole family without breaking the bank. With so many different frames, styles, and fashions to choose from, you're going to love your new look with Zenny. Just click on the info button right up here to get the special Peora price. So after the chart-topping success I make it with you and the four top five hits that followed, Brad had carved a niche in the AM radio format that was hard to argue with. David felt the soft rock was what Brad did the best, and that was just fine with him. Brad officially broke up in the summer of 1973, though. Their last concert was performed at the Old Salt Palace in Salt Lake City, Utah, on May 19, 1973. And we'll see it through. A dissolution of Brad was really hard on his fans. And there were millions of Brad lovers all around the world. And Rob, Jimmy, and Larry teamed up to write some tunes together. But it was David that carried on where Brad left off. He released his debut solo record that was simply titled First. Uh, this happened in late 73. Now, that included Clouds, a song David wrote about the incessant life on the road and a yearning to get back home. Great song. That I would always choose a cloud. In 1975, David put out his second solo album, Never Let Her Go. Although the title track restored the soft rock glory that David accomplished with Bread uh, when the single peaked at number three on the Easy Listing chart, which is the AC chart, uh, it was a far cry from the success he had experienced as the leader of Bread years earlier. Elektra Records offered David and the band a lofty deal to make a big comeback, you know, make a Bread record. So in 1976, David patched things up with his fellow founding member Jimmy Griffin, he brought back Larry Nectel and Mike Botts to record. The Lost Without Your Love album that was released in January of 1977. This featured a return to the top 10 for Bread when the title song went all the way to number nine on the Billboard Hot 100, and it also went to number three on the Adult Contemporary chart, and uh, also went to number one on the AC chart in Canada. But I'm lost without your love. So Lost Without Your Love, uh, that would be the last album for Bread, and even though the subsequent tour to support the album was a big box office success, the four musicians once again went their separate ways from there. You know I'm hooked on you. As many of you probably remember, David composed and performed the theme for the motion picture The Goodbye Girl, which won an Academy Award for Best Actor uh, for Richard Dreyfuss, great movie. Uh, it would be David's biggest hit as a solo artist. It reached uh, number 15 on the Billboard Hot 100 in early 1978. The you do, my Taking advantage of the popularity of the movie and his song, David put out an album titled Goodbye Girl in the spring of 78 with uh, Took the Last Train as a follow-up single. But the album uh, pretty much flopped. Took the last train to San at the dawn of a new decade, David entered his 40s. He released two more solo albums, Falling in Love Again in 1980, and there was Take Me Now. But when both of them failed to move off the shelves, uh, David came to a crossroads. I mean, he felt he had accomplished everything that he set out to do. After more than 20 years of the constant pressure of writing and recording and touring, David was in need of a much-deserved hiatus. So, in the mid-80s, David he left the music business altogether. He retired to a 3,000 acre ranch in Shasta County, California that he bought in 74. He gave up the stage and his adoring fans to become a cattle rancher. The decision to leave the limelight it was a surprise to David's fans, but those close to him knew that owning and operating a cattle ranch was always a dream that he had since he was a kid. Being a professional musician meant that David Gates had to sacrifice his love of the outdoors. I mean, after fulfilling one of his ambitions, it was time for him to get away from the studios and the tour buses and the hotels and the concert venues and you know, enjoy the countryside with his family. And although David didn't grow up on a farm or a ranch during his childhood in Tulsa, Oklahoma, his parents did. His mother and father told him some very colorful stories about you know, raising livestock on ranches in Wyoming and Utah that just fascinated him. David also loved visiting relatives in his youth, you know, who lived on farms in Wyoming and Illinois. 
seemed that ranching, it was in his blood. In a small town. For more than five years, David completely immersed himself in his cattle ranch, you know, working in the pasture until the sun went down. Around 1990, with the ranch running as well as he wanted it to, David started to miss being a songwriter. I mean, after all, writing was always his first love. He would come home from a hard day in the fields, and then he'd go into a home studio to work on some new music ideas that were floating around in his head all day long. So he was working, he was writing in his head. In 1994, after a 13-year break from recording, David released his sixth and final solo album, Love Is Always 17, on Discovery, a small independent label known for distribution of jazz recordings. The title track was a song that David had been thinking about for three years before he recorded it. Is always 17. Now, it wasn't a comeback. He didn't make the album to get back on the radio. I mean, after all, this was the 90s. It was a passion project, you know, that satisfied a reawakening for his love of making music and songwriting. To be said about a town of some small size. Before permanently retiring from the music business, David did have one last hurrah in 2003 uh, with the David Gates Songbook, a collection of 20 songs recorded with Bread from 69 through 73, plus his solo hits and his latest material. To promote the songbook, David toured around the world backed by a 10-piece string section played by local symphony musicians, including Europe, Asia, South Africa, Australia, and New Zealand. Uh, David called the special release the best 20 songs he had ever written. He regarded Find Me, uh, one of his newer songs, as the best thing he'd written since If, which is another classic. David Gates and Brad have always been incredibly popular in Southeast Asia. In fact, Find Me was actually the number one selling single in Thailand for four weeks in 2003. Cross your heart and promise to find me. As far as the other members of Bread go, Mike Botts passed away from colon cancer in 2005. Uh, Jimmy Griffin also died of cancer that same year. A heart attack took the life of Larry Nectel in 2009. As for David Gates, he made another life change in the early 2000s. In what David called a fit of bad judgment, he sold his prized cattle ranch and he moved to a gated community in San Diego with Joe Rita, uh, his high school sweetheart and wife of more than 64 years. That's like 250 years in Hollywood time. As of 2023, the couple is enjoying their golden years in the peaceful quiet of Mount Vernon, Washington. I I mean, we hear so many stories about rock and roll tragedies and tortured artists all the time. It feels really good to tell a story about an iconic musical artist that truly has a happy ending. And it makes sense with David Gates. It matches his voice. The early 70s was a time of great conflict. I mean, the hopelessness of the ongoing Vietnam War and the disillusionment created by the Watergate controversy in the White House weighed heavily on everybody's minds. The songs of bread brought relief to the strains of whatever hardships one was going through. Like a light to the voice of David Gates, it was, and still is, a romantic escape, massaging away the toxins of an ADD, OCD riddled world. For us, you know, bread fans, there are songs that stand out evoking a special time in our lives. For me, it's always been Baby I'ma Want You and that car ride with my dad. And when he asked me to shut off everything around me, open my mind and just listen, listen to this song. Every time I hear the beautiful introspection, the heartfelt affection and vulnerability of Baby I'ma Want You, and David Gates' soothing tenor voice. It just takes me back so many years to that pivotal moment of sweet conversation with my dad and even sweeter conversion to the magic of David Gates and bread and a memory with my dad that I cherish more and more each year since he passed away. It's been almost four years. I tried the same thing with my son a few months ago. You know, he wanted me to skip to the next track in a playlist I was listening to when we were about 30 seconds in on Baby I'ma Want You. Me. So, you know, I followed my dad's same pattern 
decades before that it happened, and I asked him to open his mind to the magic of David Gates, to this beautiful song. He got through it. I have a sneaking suspicion that he actually liked it. I'm not sure yet if it left the impact it did with me years before with my own dad, but my hope is that 20 years from now, driving with his own son, and the song comes on, and he passes it on and on. Baby, Thanks so much for watching. Leave us a comment about David Gates and Bread and this perfect slice of 70s soft rock. Ah, Bread, they had so many classic songs. What are your favorites? What do you think about him just up and disappearing? I'd love to do an interview with him if he ever sees this. I would love to sit down. He's one of, one of the best voices out there as far as I'm concerned. If you like our content, we invite you to subscribe below. We would love to have you as part of our, part of our community here celebrating the best rock. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends.